with a pretty good weapon speed compared to that to uh, let's say a siege tank weapon speed so you can get a so it's it fires at over double the rate of a siege tank doing pretty much 24 ish damage um pretty sick and it, they're actually really effective against colossi too they damage colossi down quicker than a viking will. the difference is obviously you don't have the same amount of range they're not as hardy and they're not as cheap um, but they are very, very good units, and if you can get them in there with a point defense drone shielding them, they will do a lot of, put a huge dent in the protest. And we can see a dark shrine is going down for Gossi, and where did he put that dark shrine? It's a hidden, super secret location. It's hitting here behind his natural. Good location, because Terran's going to scan two things. He's going to scan up here to see army composition. The scan's not going to grab the back of the natural. Probably. Um, or he's going to scan here in the main. And he's going to see the Twilight Council, but if he, it's standard. It's blink, it's probably charged, especially with the tanks. It's probably going to be charged. We can see a little bit. Of, he's trying to scare the observer away, but Gospy is paying attention. Really good control. Pulls that observer back and doesn't lose it. And you can see these marines patrolling around, possibly looking for clearing out the tower. He's only held by pro. Gospy is taking a third. Again, being a greedy, greedy macro player. Um, we can see that uh, Derek is macroing really, really well, keeping his money low. Uh, he actually is slightly up in harvester count, which means that he's ahead in macro because he's got these lovely, lovely mules. I mean, look at his income right now with these mules dropping um, as compared to Gossi. So Gossi is taking a third, so he does sacrifice a little bit of economy for that. He does have two immortals out. Obviously, these are quite good against tanks. The hardened shield is really, really good at dealing with um, the damage of tanks, um, of course. And... Um, and you can see the hardened shield it reduces the incoming damage to 10, so you can send these out in front of your army. In addition to that, immortals do 50 damage a shot versus armored. And when you have tanks that have 160 health, that's like pretty much 3-ish shotting tanks. Um, the problem is the marines are all really, really good against immortals, but I don't know if he has stim pack yet. Well, uh, look at upgrades central here out of Derek. Wow, this man loves his upgrades. And I love upgrades too, because they pay dividends throughout the entire game, and they make your army so much stronger, especially when you're talking about things about a a near three shot in one of these tanks, upgrade can make the difference. And we can see combat shield, of course, excellent upgrade for the Marines, adding the 10 extra health, stim pack, increasing that Marine DPS. We have medivacs out. That's a little different plot time. I don't think we had medivacs out last time. Infantry level one, and obviously he forces immortals, and then he can kill the immortals with the Marines, and he can handle the, um, excuse me, <clears throat> handle the zealots or anything else with the uh, hellions and we do of course see the um, weapons upgrade on the vehicle which is really really good um, he is making a third command center so both these guys look like they're turtling pretty hard um, it's really easy on this map uh, for these two races to pretty much take these three bases turtle hard and then have just <laughs> big massive battle in the middle you can see out of gospy he just finished storm interesting choice um, of course, the Templar could feed back that Raven. They could feed back Metabacks. Mm hmm 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 Feed back Banshees. Full, you know, it's not like he can burn the energy out with uh, Cloak. In addition, those Marines, they don't last very long against a Storm. It's not like he has a hardy Marauder army. He has a Marine army. A couple well-placed Storms could, could make these Marines and Hellions, which I do believe are light, yes. Um, could do a lot of damage. We do see the Terran is moving up here. Um, of course, Gothry with this really good Observer placement. It does see him moving out. He's putting a Stargate down and is making a third immortal right now. This should be a really, really interesting battle. You can see the Hellions moving up, trying to burn away the... Uh... Wow, that's so smart. He is on siege right now. Look at the feedback. Feedback on the uh, the Banshee. Look at that storm. Taking out the Marines. He is right on top of the tanks with the Immortals. These tanks aren't going to do much to the Immortals at all. He needs to get another storm off on these Marines. He doesn't have one left. Um, the Zealots are doing a lot of damage, but the Marines are left and they are going to tear through the Immortals. This is a really, really close battle. Oh my gosh, and, and he just needs to get rid of these rest of these Immortals, and I, I, it's a pretty even trade right now. But Gospy is going to take the day with all the shields down on those Immortals. He's going to hold it off. That point defense drone did do some work, but uh, it's going to let the Raven escape. But I will say that was definitely a win for Gospy because he's got his expensive units up. Those shields will regen, and those Immortals will be good as new, whereas the Terran lost all of that thick mech center of his army he's left with a bio composition against high templar which are being worked in a fleet beacon going down really intriguing choice and i would say let's look at the units lost tab to see if my guess is right and indeed it is um gospy definitely took a good lead there it's the, the harvester count it's fairly even the terran is still slightly ahead on the other hand the terran hasn't quite yet taken his third gospy look at this look at the scouting perfect sense of timing but he is just going to miss seeing the command center um, but he has to assume that a third's going up soon, um, if there's not another push coming. We can see Blank is being researched, as well as Ground's level, ground Armor Level 3. I really like him pushing out the armor upgrades against the Siege Tanks. We can see that he is continuing to produce Siege Tanks. He is bringing out Ghosts now, really, really smart, with the Mobius Reactor, which, of course, increases Ghost starting energy. Two things that these Ghosts do against this army. First of all, they take away the energy. 
of the High Templar. Of course, they only do 100 energy damage with that last patch, um, but they will also reduce the shields, the hardened shields of the Immortals. When Immortals don't have their shields, they die quite, quite quickly, even two tanks um, or other sorts of mech, but of course the Marines rip through them pretty fast. Ooh, look at this, four more Immortals, or sorry, rather, four more, five more High Templar coming in. Um, so we are going to have a lot of High Templar here. Of course, we don't have the Kydarian Amulet as we used to, which would uh, give the uh, High Templar enough energy for one storm as we get out the gate, but all of these High Templar will have enough energy for a storm. And one of them back here has been sitting here for quite some time, and he'll have enough energy for a storm and a feedback and possibly two storms by the time the Terran attacks. This point, Defense Terran is still hanging on. Still hanging on. A lot more ghosts coming out. I really like ghosts. They're just good overall units. I'm not sure how I feel about making a planetary here. I suppose you could be afraid of a counter coming through here. Um, or you could always just put a marine or two up here to make sure no one breaks down the rocks. I, I guess he's afraid of maybe a drop or a warping, but I just, in this back in this defensive position where you can cover things from up here, and you could always just, you know, take a position out here to make sure nothing gets by here. I'm not sure I'm such a huge fan. As long as these rocks are up, you really don't have to worry too much about Dark Templar. As soon as the rocks go down, maybe you throw a couple more units back here. It's just the mules are so valuable. On the other hand, he doesn't really have many mineral patches left, so it's like the mules sort of start to lose their value at that point. You can see Gospy has just saturated the gold. He is going to start to take a really big lead. Two Dark Templar are coming in, and a mothership is about to finish. That fleet beacon is going to work. Gospy's army is looking quite frightful at this time. Derek is very behind. In order to get back into this game, he's going to land some key EMPs. He's going to need to not lose his Raven, and he's going to need to have something to deal with that mothership. Especially if the mothership vortexes, say, siege tanks or whatever. We can see the Dark Templar coming in. There's nothing here at the goal. This Dark Templar is going to come down here and check. Um, Gospy, remember, did float that observer back at the wrong time and wasn't able to see him take this third, but when he sees that they're not here, here, or here, he's going to have to by process elimination. Assume the third is here. We do see 3-3 coming out for the Terran Bio. 3-3 uh, Marines are quite a frightful unit, but uh, High Templar are just going to be able to eat them alive fairly, fairly quickly. I would assume we'll see this Dark Templar going to work on these rocks pretty soon, and it's going to make me look like a fool when he breaks down these rocks and the Planetary Fortress does save the day. On the other hand, I do still warrant that uh, he could have spotted this happening and then come back here and reacted appropriately. You can see the Terran is, is coming up with these ghosts. He's going to try and get some, uh, see if he can get some feedbacks off on the ghosts before he come up. The observer here is in a forward position to be able to spot any ghosts coming up. There's a bit of a trick you can do. I don't think it's been patched out of the game where if you target the ghosts on the minimap, you can feedback them. He needs to feedback all these ghosts before they get in. Feedback on two of the ghosts. Oh, but he got three EMPs off, but he didn't get the High Templar. High Templar still have a ton of energy. This bio's going to get ripped to shreds with good storms. Watch it. Oh, look at that. And the bio. Oh, he didn't get that much, so he backed out of the storm. However, those medevacs are going to be really, really low on energy. And those tanks are completely exposed. He can't move up with this bio or it's going to die. Those EMPs basically were the whiff he needed. Uh, the mothership is coming up here. We can tell because everyone's computer is lagging. And the mothership is coming up here. So you have the Raven is sitting out front with the point defense from defecting it. Very, very smart. But uh, we do see another uh, feedback coming out there on the Raven. Uh, the storms aren't as well places they could be. I'd like to see them more in the back. But at this point, it doesn't matter. The army is completely overwhelming. One more storm would finish this, but it's just it's not needed at this point. Uh, the Raven has been sniped. He can't really see. He has this back here for detection, but that's about it. And he is ripping through everything else, and this game is over. Very well played by Gosling.